in the 60s, Hull City, under the leadership of Cliff Britton and the financial backing of Chairman Harold Needler, set out to give Tiger supporters a team to be proud of. Though the ultimate prize of First Division football just eluded them, they entertained fans the length of the country, a breath of fresh air as they were allowed full reign to express their talents. The whole team of that period was packed with great stars and crowd favourites, but two in particular stand out in the hearts and memories of all Hull City fans. Ken Wagstaff and Chris Chilton. Ken and Chris arrived at Hull City from very different backgrounds. Country boy Chris, born in the small village of Sprotley, population 200, learnt his football kicking a stuffed pig's bladder around on the village green by day or under the lights of the local pub at night. In those days, the most dangerous hazard for children was the farmer's tractor or the return of bee swarms to the hive. In stark contrast, Ken Wagstaff was born into the close-knit mining community of Langworth North Knotts. Back-to-backs and genels forced people to live on top of each other, and those fine ball skills were honed in street football. School for Ken was the local Langworth junior, although it's been said that Ken's appearances were strictly limited. The football pitch alongside was where he learned the goal-scoring art and after being spotted by Race Carter, Ken signed for the Stags, Mansfield Town. School for Chris was in Sprotley, but the pitch where he polished his footballing technique has now long since been built over. But Chris, already playing in senior men's football at 14, had already found a great supporter in teammate Eric Grubb. Yes, it was my pleasure to uh, play with Chris when he was a 14-year-old schoolboy. And uh, I spoke to Bob Brocklebank about him only because he was scoring goals at the rate of 50 a season, playing in first county division of men's football. And I'd never seen any young man find so much space and have so much ability in the air to head a ball during all the years I'd played football. And it was a pleasure for me to see him go on and have such success at Hull City. Chris was to make his debut at 17, a boy in a men's game. Waggy, by now, was also in first team action and he remembers those times vividly. When Rage came along and watched me play, and I think I missed two penalties, and uh, he signed me on for Mansfield, and he gave. I played with Peter Morris and Chris, Sim, uh, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> Mike Stringfellow, and Rage played us all in the same team, all at 17 years old at Rochdale. No, I mean I, uh, I uh, was called into Mansfield uh, football ground. I forget what day it was. I know it was on November the 12th. I can't remember what day it was. And Joe Eaton said, I'll just come with a suit on. I said, well, I can't, because I haven't got one. So, uh, and then they brought me up uh, through Doncaster. I thought I was going to Nottingham Forest, uh, because Nottingham Forest was after me, and Brentford, and he said, no, you're going to Old City. And I met Mr. Needler and Cliff Britton, and I went in the station hotel. And, and so I decided, I went home and thought about it for about 12 hours, and I decided that I would come. So then I came to, that's how I came to Old City. Now the most formidable striking partnership outside the first division was to begin. Let's hear what some of their contemporaries recall. When I came back here as a player and played with Ken, 
on a couple of times. Uh, yes, he was he was excellent. His goal scoring speaks for itself, uh, and I would I would go as long as go along and say that if he'd have gone to a first division club, he would have definitely played for England. He was as good as Greavesy. I've played against Greavesy and, and and Dennis Laws and that. And, and, and after seeing Ken and playing with him, he was he was as good as them. Easily as good as them. Ken come from uh, Mansfield, you know, which was a big fee in those days for forty thousand pounds. And his individuals, I've always maintained that Waggy was one of the best players I ever played with or against. That's my own individual opinion. If I'd have been picking one player to be in my side, it would have been Ken Wagstaff. He had tremendous skill. The great pity about Waggy was he never represented his country for there were players in the game that couldn't have laced his boots, to be quite honest, and had many caps. Waggy, I always said, had an evil cunning to me inside the box. Never panicked, never ever lost control of himself inside the box and was deadly when it came to the clinical finish. Was it the fact that he, uh, he played in the second division or for an unfashionable club that denied him a chance to play for his country? I wouldn't know the reason, to be quite honest. It, it was always a bit baffling to me. Whether it was because he was in the second division, I wouldn't... But there were players in the second division picked to play for England, so I can't see that was the exact reason. And I think, looking at it afterwards, being on the managerial side, I think Cliff Britton must have had a lot of offers for Ken Wagstaff to play in the first division. He turned them down to the benefit of, of Old City. But yes, he, he could have played first division football. No doubt at all. He got so much ability, they were unbelievable. The only one person I saw played against was Jimmy Greaves, who I would say was on a path. And Jimmy Greaves, as you know, gets all the headlines of being the greatest goal scorer. But this fellow won't far behind. Terrific. Could have very quickly. They had this wonderful understanding. Um, they were very different. Uh, Waggy was a bit more devious. And I suppose Chris was immensely powerful. And they just were a wonderful combination. And because you were working in the London area, you did get a chance to see whole city on the travels. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, I mean, the great occasion when they played in London was when they played in the, um, in the, se um, no, it wasn't the semi-final, it, it was well on in the cup when they played Chelsea at Stamford Bridge, and they looked like being totally overrun, and, and, and Chelsea were all over them and winning 2-0, and I, you know, I, I knew I was going to be struggling with my uh, London friends after the game, but then Waggy popped up with two, and it was to all, and it was a marvellous occasion. I went with my father. He's, well, I'll be the first fella to sit, and, and I've, I've said this not just for the benefit of this, of this filming and video, but I, I think he's probably, at that particular time, he was probably one of the best goal scorers in the country, barring none. And how he never played for his country is, is beyond me. I just cannot understand, because he had so many qualities and he was, he was unique because he, was, he could turn a game just through his own ability or his own vision. And he's, his tremendous attribute and his goal scoring record counts for that. You know, I mean, sometimes I would, I would have a little go at him because I felt he probably wasn't doing his share of the graft or he wasn't putting people under pressure. But at the end of the day, we had a great rapport in the respect that we could say things to each other, but if we needed to, then we would link back together again, and the mind and the and the the skill factor would come into operation, and we would turn teams inside out. But that was, and I think basically, if if we could have put the two qualities of player, that's my my uh, assets and Ken's assets and his and his abilities. If you'd link those two together, I think you'd probably have had the perfect player in the sense of all the skills of the game, as well as a, a, a prolific goal-scoring machine. But that wasn't to be, so we made, uh, we made the best of, um, of our abilities, and uh, I suppose at the end of the day, it was, we finished up with a really quality double act. Well, many things. His strength in the air and his bravery in the box and his unselfishness with other players. He, he ran his legs off for all the other players. Chilo, we, we was, Chilo used, to make, he used to make the runs in the side. 
I mean, I, I bet when Chris came off the pitch, he was absolutely shattered. Because we, we, he was the decoy. We used to call him the decoy, and he used to make runs for other people. And we'd, we'd got this system where Chilo would go to the near post, White would go to the far post, I would go just outside the box ready for a long shot. But this fella, this fella would run for miles. So unselfish, a very unselfish player. But his great ability, even though he was a big lad, he was very good on the ground. In the air, he was tremendous. And I think you've got to compare him at the time with such as Tony Aitley. Again, we've got all the headlines about being the great head of the ball. But Chilo, I would back him against anybody. Terrific. And Chilo and White, the combination of the different type of players, what they were, what a good combination. And that's the reason what I'm saying about that it made our life just behind them a lot easier. Chris Chilton was the perfect foil for Ken Wexter. Chris was another good player, a very, very good player, Chris Chilton. Tremendous strength in the air, Chilla, and had a far defter touch than people give him credit for. Waggy being the great individual he was, stole a lot of the limelight from Chris. If Waggy hadn't been on the same side as Chilla, Chilla would have got a lot more credit than he actually got. People in later years started to realise what a great player Chilla was. In his own deafness, a touch and skill, was a very good player with his back to the goal, except in the ball knocking it off and moving again. A lot of present day players can't do that. And in there, tremendous, tremendous in there. And took a lot of the weight off Waggy, as the big fella up front. They were, as a pair, they were terrific. He was a terrific foil for him. Did Chris stand out as a young boy? Yes, yes, he always did. There was from, never any doubt that he'd make oh, no, it? No, no, from joining the club as a lot. I mean, he wasn't that old when he made his debut in the first team, Chris. He didn't spend long in the reserves. Very short time in the reserves, he came straight out of the first team. On merit. On sheer merit alone. He was so outstanding that it was obvious he was going to be a player. He finished up with back trouble, which curtailed his career a bit to finish up. But, uh, yes, in his own right, he was a great player as well. Well, they were so very good. I mean, I, I remember Pat Crerand once saying he thought there was a time when they were the best pair of strikers in the league, in, in any division. Um, but there was, they seemed to have a marvellous understanding, one with the other. They were both very different. Uh, one was right-sided, and uh, Waggy was sort of left-footed, wasn't he? Yeah. So I remember I, asked, I said to Chris once, I said, do you ever, do you ever kick with your left foot? He said, no, Tom, that's just a stander. Right. How, how do you think they did complement each other? Because they did play tremendously well as a pair. Well, they both were brain, you know, they, they, they had a good brain, you know, they were very clever at letting the ball go to the other one. And they'd often score from the other one's pass. I remember that happened at Watford, they got one each, with, with an assist each, if you see what I mean. And I was in the, the box at uh, Watford, I remember jumping in the air like that, and I realised I was surrounded by the enemy, so I sat down very quickly. They did. Uh, did you feel... Um sort of privileged about that fact? Or was oh, it hard to believe? It was hard to believe, and I think the privilege was that they stayed for so long. And Chris stayed virtually for the whole of his career. I know he went to Coventry and so on, but uh, virtually played out his career. Ken did the same. And I thought that was terrific, because we've had, you know, bright youngsters come through, Stuart Pearce and Brian Marwood, and, uh, I mean, professionally, being very cold and professional about it, I think both... Ken and Chris would have done themselves a favour by moving on. And, I mean, you must ask them yourselves so why, exactly why they, they didn't. And, I mean, it is a, a brutal fact of life that you don't make any money in the game by staying loyal to one club. And that's something that the game has to look at. That's a problem the game has. And it happens at every level. I mean, that when, you know, when the Aston Villas and the Tottenham Hotspurs can't hang on to their top players because Europe beckons, that's a reality we all have to live with, or they all have to live with. So it is a huge compliment. Yes, I was thrilled, because I was living in Hull through all that period, and it was terrific to have a team that, that other people knew about. 